Situated in southern Libya is a remarkable dried out river valley, the Wade Matkandush. At first sight, although the valley looks rather insignificant, it actually contains a unique treasure of mankind, a treasure that lay hidden for thousands of years. Today, the landscape is dry and barren. It rains seldom here, but when it does, it transforms the wadi into a green valley. It was not nature that attracted man to this region in the middle of the 20th century, but archaeology. Italian archaeologist and paleontologist Fabrizio Mori discovered many fascinating carvings in the rocks of Matkandush. The remoteness of this location and constant lack of water in the region created many problems for Mori and his men. But despite the difficulties, the Italian research team managed to discover thousands of years old carvings and drawings in this area. The rock paintings of Matkandush are of tremendous interest. The first image that draws the attention is of African fauna. According to the rock pictures, this region has not always been as dry as it is today. Thousands of years ago, the landscape was that of a savanna. Most of the images date back to the Bubalus epoch, an epoch that is easily recognizable due to the depictions of the old buffalo. The Bubalus was an outstanding epoch in the history of southern Libya. Archaeology suggests that the Bubalus epoch lasted around 5,000 years until 6,000 BC. The main motifs of the Bubalus period, the old buffalo, are related to the Cape buffalo of today. They became extinct around 5,000 years ago. In addition to buffalo, other famous and colorful members of the African landscape have been immortalized on the rock walls. The rhinoceros lived thousands of years ago in the then fertile and humid region of Matkandush. Why the early inhabitants of the desert mountains of Akakus carved images of the indigenous wildlife into so many rock walls of the river valley remains a mystery. Even so, their creators must have been extremely diligent as tens of thousands of their images have been discovered and catalogued in the Sahara area. Perhaps the rock walls of this dried out river valley were once a sacred place. That would explain the excellent condition of the images. Mm. 
The indigenous fauna in Madkandush at the time of the Bubalas artists was far more varied than it is today. It is thought that the rock walls lay close to an important caravan route. Although the camel was used as a beast of burden and for riding only some time later, The dromedary only replaced the horse and donkey at the beginning of Christianity. It was then that the Garamantes tribe ruled the trading routes of the Sahara. The rock walls of Matkandush feature both the gradual technical development and improving skills of the artists. Over the course of time, the pictures not only became more artistic, but were also depicted in larger dimensions. Some of the images are larger than life. The works that date from the Bubalas period, the oldest historic epoch of the Sahara rock paintings, indicate the impressive technical skills of the artists. During the cattle period, that dated from 5000 to 2500 BC, man was depicted for the first time. The Fighting Cats, one of the earliest rock carvings of the Sahara, is one of the most famous pictures of the Valle Marcandouche. The countless rock paintings make the dried-out river valley look like a huge open-air museum that features all five periods of Saharan rock art. There are also pictures that date back to the Garamantes, a legendary and mysterious tribe that dominated Trans-Sahara trade for many centuries. But thanks to the work of scientists and Italian archaeologist Fabrizio Mori, many an unanswered question relating to the Garamantes has been answered. The discovery of the rock paintings has meant that a once unknown period of the history of mankind has been preserved for future generations. The insignificant looking Wadi Matkandush contains a priceless treasure of civilization. And who knows how many more interesting finds are yet to be revealed from within the sleeping shadows of the Sahara, in the untouched wilderness of southern Libya.